Hello, everyone. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby here with John Pano, production designer for The Last of Us. Um, and so much of this, the design, the look of The Last of Us is defined, I think, by nature taking back the world. Uh, so how did that concept inform your approach to the designs? Well, um, you know, we kind of, we made a lot of sets. So we made everything and then kind of, you know, unmade it in a sense, whereas we had to, it was really important to, to show 20 years of desiccation and nature taking everything over um, and breaking everything down. And so we had a fantastic greens department that I worked with very closely and integrated that, that destruction, everything into our sets, which, you know, when, when you think about it, okay, we're going to build everything and carpenters like to build things straight and they like to have the balustrade straight and the stairs straight. And then, you know, in the drawings in our concept art, let's make sure that that's all pulled apart. But that was a big part of it. And we looked at a lot of research and we also looked at Naughty Dogs, you know, what they had done and, you know, our own research, um, on our end, because they're making everything from scratch, we're making it all real and we can make things a little more uh, sexier, juicier, dirtier than they can in the uh, in the game. Hmm. Well, speaking of the game, there's a lot of great sets that are, you know, famous locations from the game. Like I'm thinking of that amazing uh, flooded hotel lobby. Uh, yeah. which is looks uh, al almost nearly identical to what's in the game. What goes into that type of huge recreation? Well, that, you know, we always looked at the games. Um, we didn't look at the gameplay so much because the gameplay is paths, but I always loved the concept art for the game. So there are keyframes. We would base our concept art and our keyframes, which you would show everybody, um, to, uh, you know, they were close, but of course, we're going to be doing some things knowing that the camera, right, in the game, you're walking and you are the camera. And in our show, even though the camera is intimate and with the people, we definitely have moments where it is, you know, outside of the action, right? So we want to have, we're, we're creating more. We want to have those areas, those things to shoot through. Um, we're doing, you know, close-ups on things like the ducks and the frogs and everything. So there, there are many levels of, you know, conceptualizing the keyframes from the game. We're going beyond them in a way, but the atmosphere and the tone, it, which is, you know, I think the most beautiful thing about the game, we want to capture and we want to make sure that's there. Yeah, well, well, there are some moments, you know, that are kind of reinvented versions of of the game space. Like um, I'm thinking of the the sort of underground area where they discover with Henry the drawings on the wall, which is in Kansas City here, but it is a full beachside bunker in the game. How do yes. you? Yeah. What is the process of of remixing things like that? Well, we we take the things that are important that tell the story the murals, the rules of people coming and going. The script tells us a lot too. The script will say, you know, uh, you know, this is, you know, we see this, we see that. Those things, that's where we start. When we are, I think what we did in the, in the uh, show was we really made pains to, and they do this in the game, but again, we have to be more real in a sense. You know, how does light get down there? How does water get down there? So we did a lot of research. We added vents in the ceiling that light could conceivably at a certain point of the day with the position of the sun um, come down. So again, the tone and some key things that really, you know, like the murals and things that we would use as reference. And then, uh, you know, we're filling in things for the script and for the practicality of a crew and actors and the action and you know where how we want to get uh through the scene so those things add layers and again that camera positions that they don't have mm -hmm. to worry about in the game all those things add layers to how we design things and 
or locations that we look for? Well, and, and speaking of locations, there's, you know, many series have a home base set, perhaps, but this one really doesn't because it's no. a traveling show. No, so we didn't have a, yeah. <laughs> How does that, like the sheer number of spaces you have to design, how does that affect the process? It was challenging. I mean, it, it means that uh, we were lucky enough to have pretty much had the means to do things. It, and it, it, it's, it is just a challenge. And we're also doing it, not only were we not um, in any one place for any amount of time, we're also um, doing that on TV schedule. So mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to have a really great crew and a big crew. And everyone, you know, um, met that challenge. And I think, you know, we're, we're great about it. And, we're, and sometimes when you have a challenge like that, too, it really inspires you to do your best work. Mm. And it's really like, you know, wow, so we can really build a giant wall. Great. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I'm, I, you do know, I don't mind the, the time. It's, it's, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I think maybe the closest you get to a home base is uh, Jackson, um, which is yeah. which is a really great detailed space. Was that a real life street or town that you took yeah, over? How that, much was that, that was a that was a town in uh, Alberta that um, I believe that was Canmore. We had we had a lot of locations. We had 180 locations. So forgive me if I don't remember. I think that was Canmore. And the reason we picked that town, because it's um, in a very, you know, it's near the Rockies. It just happens to be the Canadian Rockies. And you see the Canadian Rockies down, looking down the town. And that is what you see when you stand in Jackson, Wyoming. You see the Rockies looking down at town. So it is a, it's a, it's a, I wouldn't call it a rustic town, but it is a town in the wilderness, you know, and it has the right, it had the right bona fides, it had the right shell uh you know beginnings of things that had it felt western and because of the environments around it in the woods and the snow um which you know it snowed while we were setting up that big log wall so that was great um all of that contributed to it being a really excellent excellent location and a good match for jackson um so that's what that's why we went to that particular one but we did rebuild all the facade we built rebuilt a lot of the facades we obviously put up the fort wall of logs and you know dressed it as if it was a town of us uh, you know survivors wow there, there's also you know there's a great interior scene in in that section of the show where ellie and joel are in that pink bedroom which is basically a time capsule it uh, is. of when you know when the world ended yeah. um what was it like building that space? Because it's a very well, iconic scene. I have to say that that's one of the sets. Most of our interiors were sets, mm -hmm. no matter what size they were. But that was one of our sets where Craig said, we should just copy what, what was in the game. And that's one of the few that we actually copied exactly um, to the game. You know, and again, we are adding another layer and, and a bit more dirt and uh, you know, doing things for the camera and doing things that we know for lighting, which there isn't any, right? Because there's no electricity. Or, um, so doing all those things, but still that that set was uh, one of the few that we, you know, it's so good. Let's just, let's just, you know, we want, and it was important to have things like that, like Easter eggs to, for people who played the game. And then you get to do Bill's Town, which is not in the game at all, which we, was you know a great respite from all the desiccated misery of the rest of uh, the show so that did was you great. did you have to play the game at all to make sure you were getting I played Easter the eggs game. and references I played the where game was that bit, from? but i couldn't stay up till four o'clock in the morning every night to follow it through. <laughs> but I, I i had played the game a little bit because but i have to say i was always incredibly impressed with the concept art for it mm -hmm. Even before the game came out, or maybe when it just came out, I saw the concept art and I was like, this is really cinematic. This is concept art that you would do for a, for a film or a TV show. So it's outstanding. Yeah. Well, here it is as a TV show. When you do have something that cinematic and that grand, how 
you know, what's the process of deciding what you're going to create practically and what has to be filled in digitally? Um, I think, you know, uh, Craig always wanted to do, coming from Chernobyl, the high degree of realism in that he really wanted to do everything as real as possible. We didn't really have people walking through volumes and our green screen, obviously we're in the distance when you see two buildings like this, that is Andrew and our fabulous VFX department. But I think because we have our actors practically walking through things, we need to make that. And we always made as, you know, we, we um we made as uh, everything that we could make again because in interiors we built those so we were able to make everything if we were there walking down the streets and um you know that are standing in for boston we're dressing the entire street and we are going 20 feet up the walls around them so we actually did a lot and Things, they're just things that don't make sense, right? We have a crater in the ground. So we laid green screen in there and we're doing set extensions that they're just on the peripheral. But for nine times out of 10, we're, we're making that, um, we're making everything, um, mm -hmm. which I think is, you know, important for the actors, important. It gives the show a sense of gravitas and, and reality that you just don't get in the shows where people are walking through volumes. There's also not that weird, you know, I'm going past things quickly. You could linger. The actors could linger. The camera could linger. And I also, with multiple cameras, you know, someone might be shooting, again, those ducks on the piano. So we want to make sure that duck and that piano is is actually there. Yeah. Well, you know, I was looking at your um, your resume, and you have a lot of design that is more contemporary design. <laughs> and I'm curious, how does... How does working in the apocalypse compare to a to a more contemporary design? You know, I look at it with if you have great re I'm a, love to dig into the research. Mm -hmm. So whether it's the research for something, you know, the houses in Malibu of rich people or a subway that's flooded and has rats scurrying around it, I feel like I'm if I have that research and I have those good bones behind the design, it really almost doesn't make a difference. And the concept art from the game was research as well. You know, it's all, you know, like if you're going to do a, a period piece in the 15 or 1600s, you're going to look at Gainsborough draw, uh, paintings, but they're not real, right? They're not, but they have an uh, evoke, they evoke the time. And to me, getting the atmosphere right and the tone is the most important thing. Um, you know, the details can be filled in. They, they always need to be researched even more and, and they, they fall upon other department heads as well. The tone in the atmosphere, creating that, that's, that's the key. Well, the atmosphere certainly came to life here. Uh, so excellent job in The Last of Us, John. Uh, for everyone watching, subscribe to Gold Derby. Keep with us this season. And John, thank you so much. Pleasure talking with you. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm.